Today we're going to compare these two devices because I'm guessing if you're like me, you are looking for a small, lightweight, portable, powerful machine that can do day-to-day -day business type office, maybe a little bit of graphic capability, maybe a little bit of light video editing. These are the two machines that come up trumps. You're probably thinking, shouldn't there be a Dell XPS 13 in the middle? Yeah. You might think so, I don't. I don't rate the Dell build quality in the same league as these two. I don't rate Dell support in the same league as these two. I think they've got countless driver issues and you see them in all the forums all the time, especially when they drop new devices. Listen, I love Dell. I'm sure they've got great, you know, great hearts at what they're doing. I just don't think they're finishing that, that last few percent that these guys are. So right now, dollar for dollar, these are my two best buys. If you need Windows, you've only got one choice. This is it. Wipes the floor with the Surface laptop. I think it wipes the floor with the Surface book. It's too thick for my liking. And I think the, the, the wobbly screen, sorry, I just don't get it. If you're going for, a, obviously, a Mac, you've only got one choice if you want Apple Silicon because they only gave us, you know, the MacBook Pro and the MacBook Air. And clearly, the Pro's got a little bit more juice, so you're going to go with the Pro. So how do these two devices compare head to head? Look, I've said it already. The screen on the HP is killer. OLED, the colors, hands down, stronger than the MacBook. I like the 3-2 ratio more than I like the 1610. I prefer the extra height for doing day-to-day -day business and normal type tasks. Height is more important than width because we don't spend all day watching Netflix as much as some people would like you to believe. Using the machines, you know, we're not going to get into the Windows and Mac comparison here because everybody's got an opinion and you probably already know which camp you fall into. But I got to tell you, I always think of Windows as more of a utilitarian type operating system. It gets the job done. It's not quite so pretty in the way that it does it, although it does look pretty than it used to. I go over to Apple with Big Sur, everything just feels polished. It just feels polished. The little bevels on the corners, the smoothness of the colors, the iconography down at the bottom. I, it's hard to explain, but when you look at the two, there's just something about that extra spit and polish that Apple managed to put on the device. And so even though the screen itself is an inferior technology and as much as OLED, the blacks are richer, the colors are richer, somehow they managed to make it look really, really, really good. And the other challenge here is, you know, this is an i7. It's the best that Intel can make. It's the G7 processor in there, 16 gig of RAM versus eight, a terabyte SSD versus you know, it starts at 256, but obviously you can bump it up to 512. This one's specking out at 1699. If I was to spec out the MacBook with 16 gig, $200 upgrade, and then go from the 256 to a 512 SSD, that's another $200 upgrade. So 1699 is going to get me the same memory on both, but it's going to compare me with a one terabyte SSD with Intel Optane versus a 512 SSD Mac. So here's the rub. The Mac SSD is going to be faster. The 16 gig on the Mac is going to be faster. The M1 processor, I think it's pretty much way faster. And in day-to-day -day normal usage, the MacBook absolutely flies. You load a web page on this thing, and I mean, it's, it's there. There is almost no time to blink. Windows, I don't know what it is. They just can't seem to get there. Edge, I, I'm sorry. I, I, I tried. We use Microsoft Office in my business. It just can't get those page load times the same. Using the machine is more than the sum of the parts. And I think that's the message here for the comparison review today. I could tell you which one's the best, but I think it's going to be a subjective opinion because if you have to use Windows, you really have no choice. This is it. You can't run Windows, you know, as an emulation on, on Mac anymore because it won't do it on Big Sur. If you don't care, and you can use Chrome on both of them, and you can use Adobe on both of them, you can use Office on both of them, well, now the game's on, right? And now we've got to fight on our hands. The real challenge is the 8 gig in the MacBook is probably the equivalent of 12 to 14 gig on a Windows machine because of the efficient memory management. And so you don't actually need as much memory to get the same performance. This 8 gig 256 actually flies more than this 16 gig one terabyte with an i7 just because of the way the architecture is built, the way the software is built. And then we get into the two big ones. And for me, these are the, these are the deal killers. Battery life, no fans. Now, you've probably seen some reviews and I talk about it in my review on the MacBook 
with the M1 silicon. There is still a grill at the bottom here. There are fans in this machine. It is not voodoo, okay? It does get cooled by fans, although many reviewers have never managed to get them going. I managed to. I did some final cut work on this. I had motion open, and all of a sudden, I could hear a little noise. I don't know how they're so quiet, but they really are. You gotta listen for it. And I work in a very, very quiet environment and I'm, and I'm super sensitive to noise. I could hear them, but they are the quietest fans you will ever hear. And most of the time, they never, ever kick on. It doesn't get hot. And oh my word, what did they do to that battery? It's like they got two batteries, glued them together, and then somehow blended them into the size of one. This thing lasts all day. This thing lasts two days. If you are not a heavy user, I have got two full days of use out of this M1 Apple MacBook. I can't even get six or seven hours out of the Windows machine, hands down. I can turn the performance all the way down, but then it's a dog to work with and I don't wanna work with a dog. So spec for specs, make your choice. Dollar for dollar, they're pretty similar. Operating system preferences, it's up to you. Look and feel, rich colors, slightly less polish on the system. Quite, not quite so rich colors, but a whole lot more polish. Mac stability, Apple support versus Windows. HP, one of the best companies out there. Definitely, you know, at that upper echelon. And I think fit and finish, honestly, between the two, they're both real, real high end. I don't think you're gonna look at one of these and think, man, this feels less than this. I think if you're out there at work, they're gonna look equally impressive. If you're at a conference table in front of a, a bunch of other folks, no one's gonna look down at one versus the other. No plastic in sight on either of them. They're gonna do the job you need them to do. Ultimately, you gotta decide on your operating system and if you can go between either. For me, my money, I would buy the Mac. I think the stronger resale value, I think the stronger battery life, I think the quiet and the lack of heat and that performance with the M1, oh my word, you gotta try to believe it. Go down to Best Buy, you can't go to an Apple store right now because they won't let you in, but go down to Best Buy, check them out in person if you need to, see which one looks like it makes sense for you. If it was me, I'm going with the MacBook, but oh my word, that screen. Did I mention how good the OLED is?